Hello and welcome to this edition of Tech24, I'm Julia Seeger. Now this week we talk about disruptive technologies and how to stay ahead of the curve in the tech race. The US Defense Innovation Agency, DARPA, is now considered a reference in discovering the next big thing. But can Europe come up with its own system to accelerate and scale up? We'll ask that question to the co-founder of JEDI, an agency on the road to becoming Europe's answer to DARPA. And in Test24, we'll try the Dyson V15 Detect Absolute, which has far too many features than a vacuum cleaner actually needs, but at least it makes cleaning the house fun. Now it looks like chicken and it tastes like chicken. Diners in Israel are tucking into laboratory-grown meat that scientists say is an environmentally friendly way to feed the world's growing population. It looks like chicken and tastes like chicken but the food being served to these diners in Israel doesn't come from a live animal, but rather from in vitro cell cultures grown in a lab. I wanted to be very critical, um, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. To get meat plus minus the cruelty, minus the, it, it's just amazing. The restaurant doubles as a lab, with scientists developing the restaurant's chicken product on site. This is the first time that the world can actually have a taste of cultivated meat products while observing the production, the manufacturing process in front of the rise. Here's how it works. Scientists take cells from a fertilized chicken egg. They feed the cell cultures plant-based liquids, including proteins, fats, sugars, and vitamins. Thanks to these nutrients, the cultures grow into muscle, fat, and tissue cells. The finished product, a lab-grown, no-kill chicken breast. Supermeat, the company behind the project, says the process provides a sustainable and ethical alternative to industrial animal farming. As you can see, this is a very small area, and we're able to produce hundreds of kilograms on a weekly basis here. And, and this way, we'll be able to reduce the amount of land, water use, and so many other resources. The technology behind slaughter-free meat is starting to gain ground. A Singapore restaurant made history back in December when it became the first to sell lab-grown chicken. As the global population continues to grow, proponents say such initiatives could help respond to increasing demand for food while limiting the impact on the planet. Producing innovation after innovation for decades now, the U.S. research agency known as DARPA has become the envy of Europe. It's part of the Defense Department and has had a crucial role in the space race as well as paving the way for the Internet. Many believe, especially in the wake of COVID-19, that such an agency could help make Europe an innovator rather than a follower. Well, let's welcome our tech editor, Peter O'Brien. Hello, Peter. Welcome. Hello, Julia. So what is DARPA exactly and how does it work? Well, to give it its full name, it's the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency. They only have a staff of just over 200, uh, but what they do is they incubate, they incubate and fund uh, research projects to try and give the US the upper hand in national security matters. It was founded in 1958, a year after the Soviet Union surprised the world by sending Sputnik into orbits, becoming the first ever satellite. And the US said, well, we're going to need to come up with surprises, some surprises of our own as well. Um, so as we know, innovations in defense and warfare often spill over into civilian technology and life as well. And that's really what they're trying to do. They're trying to isolate the next big thing in technology. Um, the DARPA, along with other research agencies in the US, now increasingly abroad, are then pivotal for these early innovations that change our world. Now, specifically, Peter, what are some examples that DARPA has helped discover? Or what kind of technologies has well, it helped develop? Oh, well, yeah, G GPS, drones, the PC, the internet, uh, all of these are things uh, that change the world, and DARPA can lay a claim to have had some sort of influence in their development. Um, many more ideas, of course, they invest in and are unsuccessful, uh, but it's worth it for these few groundbreaking, truly groundbreaking discoveries. It's kind of a hit-based approach to research. Let me give you a recent example. In 2013, they invested and helped develop a small unknown firm called Moderna. They supplied them with $25 million. Dollars. No, exactly. <laughs> and they told them to look into whether a messenger RNA could be used to make vaccines. Now, of course, millions of people around the world today are getting injected, injected and vaccinated with Moderna jabs as we speak. Thank you very much, Peter.
To avoid falling behind the U.S. and China in the race to deploy disruptive new technologies, many countries, such as France or Germany, have already created agencies claiming to mimic DARPA. And one of the most accomplished attempts is the Joint European Disruptive Initiative, or JEDI. Well, to talk more about it, let's turn to André lossé pietri the former special advisor to the French defense minister and one of the founders of JEDI. Hello and welcome. Hello, Julia. So what is JEDI exactly and which sectors does it focus on? So, yeah, thank you for having me on the show. Uh, so JEDI is uh, launching grand challenges. That's, that means competition throughout Europe and sometimes globally that try to tackle topics which today are too risky or too long term for the private sector. Um, so, so we create basically the economic and societal game changers of tomorrow. And why do we do that? Because we simply believe that we are in the technology century. The winner takes all. But the good news is also that nothing is won forever. So the Europeans keep complaining that they are late, which is the fact in many sectors. But here the idea is to invent the next big thing, not run after what exists in cloud, in environmental technologies, in digital technologies, in space technologies, but really to create what will be the next big thing in three, four, five years. And for that, we bring together the best brains in Europe. We have today 4,000 from academia, from the big companies, from the startup ecosystem, and we have strong support ready from, from large foundations that want things to change and not just keep Europe talking about being strong, but really being strong. Now, André, could you go into more details about why it's so important for Europe to have its own DARPA and why does it need to be both independent and well-funded? Well, I think we saw with the pandemic that what is key in to today's world is to be both, uh, to, to anticipate, to have foresight, and we have not been that good at anticipating things like the pandemic, and on the other side, being extremely agile because nobody can predict uh, the future. So, so it's important to, to focus on disruptive innovation because it's all about this exponential century in which we are. The future will not be the linear continuation of today. So that's why disruptive innovation and these DARPAs are so important. And why it's important to be uh, independent? It's simply because to have this agility, to be very fast, to be very demanding, to be not guided by spraying and, and, and praying that it works when you spray it all, all over the 27 European countries, you need to focus on excellence and have the courage to focus on that. And it's probably very difficult to do that from start in a public environment. And that's why we have created this, this, uh, this entity, which is uh, a foundation, but which is acting for the, for the common good. And, and guess what? The best brains, the best scientists, they're craving for that. They, it's not necessarily a question of money, which is too often the alibi. Of course, more money is better than less money. But it's about focusing on the breakthroughs. And for that, you need to be bold. And that's what JEDI is, is trying to do. Now, why is it so hard for the EU to replicate the success of DARPA? Well, first, it requires a really fresh mindset. What, what really strikes everybody that visits DARPA is that people are there on a very short uh, time frame. They are here hired for two years, uh, extendable one time only. And why is that so important? Because basically you take problems and you look at them with the eyes of today and not with 10, 20, 30 years of, I would say, bureaucratic uh, routine. That's important. The second thing, it's not just about uh, bottom up, which is sometimes Europe always says, okay, let's, let's see what comes up. No, it's about setting priorities. And we see currently how the US and how China tries to focus on a couple of game changers. And Europe needs to do that. Think about the environmental uh, topic. And last but not least, and that's probably the most difficult, and that's why JEDI is beyond the technological and scientific aspect, almost a political project, because it's about releasing control. And we saw that again with the pandemic. You cannot control everything top down. You need to have a mix. It's a kind of a third way uh, between bottom-up, because that's where the best ideas come from. You need to, to, to give freedom to the best scientists, the best technologists. The best. But on the other side, you need also to prioritize. And that's why, Jedi, we are focusing on 50 challenges in the environmental space, in the healthcare space, in the digital space that can be really game changers. We cannot go 
in, in, in all directions. And, and for that, it's so difficult for a political institution to do it from scratch. But long term, our roadmap once we have our first successes, and we had a great success with, with our first couple of challenges, especially around COVID, then we should morph and scale into something which is more um, um, uh, funded by the, by the public hand. But for the moment, it's civil society to take its uh, 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 you know, future in its hands. André Le Secret Pietri, thank you very much for speaking to us here on Tech24. Thank you, Judas. Yeah. And it's time now for Test24. It's considered to be quite disruptive in its own way. Today, we're trying out the Dyson V15. It's cordless like every other Dyson model, and it promises 25% more coverage with every sweep. You're holding it almost, Peter, like a weapon. Yeah, I don't mean to threaten you, Julia, but it does look like a massive gun, doesn't it? Um, it's 700 euros, this thing, which is kind of an unjustifiable cost for me, given how small my floor is. But maybe if I had a mansion, it would come in good use. Um, so what's quite special about this is, as you can see, it has a laser which can show you all of the little bits of debris that your eyes can't see themselves. Not only this, it has a piezo sensor inside which, which picks up the exact number and the measurement of every single bit of dust that comes in. This means that you've got, you've got a heads up display actually right. on the back of the vacuum which shows you in the hundreds of thousands how many little bits you're picking up, how big they are, why would you ever need that? You don't, you don't, you don't okay. really need it, Julia, but it's pretty cool. And of course, it is a Dyson, so it is powerful enough. It is nice and light. It is cordless, as you say, so it is a pleasure to use. Um, I do actually find the, the little laser quite, quite fun to use, but also quite helpful for seeing all those bits you, you didn't notice were there. I suppose it's perfect if you're a complete clean freak. All right, Peter, now, is there anything that this vacuum can't do? Well, one thing that competitor LG is doing, which uh, Dyson currently isn't, is they are selling uh, mop attachments for their vacuum cleaners. So you can actually, once you've done the vacuuming, you can stick a mop on the end of it, and it works just like that as well. Um, but with all of these vacuum cleaners around the place, which is so high tech, I do still wonder why I'm still using my Henry Hoover. That is a good question indeed, Peter. Thank you for that. It seems like you're having lots of fun, though, with that yeah, gadget. Yeah, Thank you. <laughs> it brings us to the end of this week's edition of Tech24. We hope you enjoyed it. And Peter here is going to vacuum the studio.